What's up, world? It's your boy DJ Mel Star, aka No Headphones in Harlem, aka Harlem. The actual way that I came up is kind of strange. I was um, running around and listening to people like Tony Humphrey and uh, Masters at Work, Kenny Dope, and Todd Terry's, and I got caught up in you know um, watching guys like Steve D, Clark Kent. Uh, you know, the Funk Master Flex, the Red Alerts. And um, once that started, you know, for me, it was like, oh, wow, this is what I want to do. So I kind of took the house and the disco classics and kind of combined it with the hip hop and R&B. And I, I came up with Mel Star. The biggest impact for me was watching other DJs who couldn't go behind the ropes when you know like when, when they had park jams and stuff like that so it was like only the cats that was like real nice was able to go behind the ropes so i always said to myself one day i'll try to get behind those ropes to be in the ropes amongst the greatest guys you know because it's like that's the greatest guys that ever played is the people that are you know inside the ropes you know so my first set of turntables actually all of my equipment came from my uncle, um, his name was Butch Williams. And um, so I basically inherited uh, a pair of 1200s. A Bozak mixer was my first actual setup. So I had all knobs, so at that time, I didn't really know about the crossfaders and all of that stuff. So in my teenage years, I was interning for Masters at Work, who at the time I didn't know was Lil Louis Vega, Kenny Dope, the whole CNC Music Factory project. I didn't know who these guys were. So at the time, I was just cleaning the drums and going to the store for these guys. And then from that point, it was like, um, you know, they were like, yo, you should DJ and you should learn since you're around these guys. And at, like I said, at that time, I didn't really know exactly who they were because I was too young. And then once I figured out who they were and I was like, oh, yeah, I gotta learn it, you know what I mean? So from that point, uncle and giving me the equipment and then starting to listen to the to the newer guys and stuff like that, I, I like I said, I try to incorporate, you know, everything I, I've learned into that. The biggest challenge is always to make sure that you elevate your level of play from every party that you do. So every time you get to one party, you wanna try to outdo the last party you did, you know what I mean? Just to keep the, the bar high for yourself, you know? Which comes with practice. The best party that I've ever did was when I went to Iraq. It was like 200,000 people. <laughs> it was so hot that you could see the sweat in the air from the people's body because it was so warm. And, um, I think that was like the greatest time I've ever had in Iraq, Kuwait, and a, and a couple of other um, unheard of areas <laughs> that I was at, you know, so it was, it, was a, it was a dope look. The best thing for me was just being able to be around all of the great guys that I've always watched coming up, you know, Flash, you know, the Kid Capris, Bismarckies, uh, the Chuck Chillouts, the Red Alerts, the Flexes. Um, all I just all the tape makers, you know, all the party DJs, Ace, and the list goes on and on. So, you know, most people are always, I guess, in tune on trying to step over what's already have been built, as opposed to trying to be a part of what's being built. You know what I mean? And just grow from there.